1933, A.G. Russell was born in Eudora, Arkansas. As a boy, growing up in a small town in the extreme southeast corner of the state, he learned how to make knives at the hand of his great-grandfather, a blacksmith. He was only nine years old when he made his first knife. He describes it as a knife that only a mother would be proud of. A.G. sketched knife designs in the margins of school books, and over the years has perfected his skills as a knife designer. He was just a young boy when his father joined the U.S. Armed Forces, served at Bataan and became a prisoner of the Japanese. His family lived all over the United States, eventually settling near San Francisco after the war. Before entering the cutlery business, A.G. did a tour of the Army and sold everything from men's suits to vacuums. By the mid-60s, A.G. and his own family were grounded back in Arkansas on a 200-acre farm east of Springdale. However, during the move, his Arkansas stone, prized for its ability to put a superb edge on a knife, was lost, and A.G. had a hard time finding a replacement. Realizing others might have this same problem, he decided to try his hand at selling whetstones. A hot springs company cut his stones, and he sold them through ads placed in gun magazines. He quickly added pocket knives to his inventory. This enabled them to build a customer list which grew into the first mail-order knife company. In the late 1960s, A.G. embarked on an extensive trip from Florida to Alaska seeking out the country's best to promote his Arkansas whetstones. It was on this trip that he met many of the knife makers who have become the legends of handmade knife making. In 1970, A.G. suggested to his knife maker friends that they form an association. Thirteen men met and formed the Knife Makers Guild. AG was named honorary president. Today, the guild is over 300 voting members strong. In the 70s, Gun Digest writer B.R. Hughes wrote, Andy Russell assists fledging knife makers and on numerous occasions he would suggest to one journalist or another that so-and-so is really doing excellent work. He's really deserving of some publicity. Why don't you give him a call? Promoting knife makers in the knife industry became a passion. He spent hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars on phone calls talking writers, particularly gun writers, into writing about the knife making he so much admired. In a 1974 article by Sid Latham, Bob Loveless shared his opinion of A.G. His efforts have helped all of us and the effect of his interests and activities have all been to the good. For myself, he's my friend and I'm all for him. He's paid some heavy dues and I think he's entitled to whatever success life throws his way. A.G. was one of my early boosters and when most people didn't even know I existed. In 1974, A.G. was inducted as the first member of the Knife Digest Cutlery Hall of Fame. In announcing that award in the 1974 Knife Digest, the editor William L. Cassidy said, It's time to favor you with a bit of history and a bit of public celebration. The history in question is the history of America's knife boom, and the celebration is the grateful acknowledgement of a man who made it happen. People who know him well say that every month he freely spends his time, money, and energy promoting knives and knife making. Indeed it is, Andy Russell, that we owe the American Knife Makers Guild, the big annual knife maker shows, the resurgence of knife making as a respected profession, and finally, cutlery's new boost in popularity. Rest assured, one fact, my friends, the credit is Russell's and his alone. A.G. Russell has done more for the cutlery industry than any man living. Thanks, Andy. Longtime friend and knife making great Bob Dozier quotes, A.J. has meant everything to the knife industry. It would probably be 30 years behind had he not helped form the guild. The business would not have grown the way it has, mostly because people become involved after reading about other makers. A knife maker may not show you how he makes his knives, but he will let you drop in and see his shop. That's all directly because of A.G. Russell. He is one of the gods of the knife business. In the 1970s and 1980s, A.G. built his mail-order business, garnering a reputation for selling quality over quantity and a penchant for excellent customer service. During those years, he built the foundation for the company as it is today. It is on that foundation that A.G. and Goldie have built a company that stands for quality, value, and variety in product, and honesty and efficiency in customer service. They met in 1982 and Goldie began to attend knife shows with A.G. After they married in 1988, Goldie, a former high school art teacher, joined the company and began producing catalogs. A.G. quickly taught Goldie everything he knew about mail order and as much as she could absorb about knives and the knife business. A lot of changes have taken place since Goldie arrived at the company. At the time, A.G. Russell Knives had three employees and handled about 19,000 orders a year from a 4,500 square foot facility. After experiencing an annual average growth of over 20%, the Russells moved to a new 8,000 square foot building in 1995. 
And in 2002, having already outgrown the Springdale facility, A.G. Russell Knives relocated to its current 35,000 square foot building in Rogers, Arkansas, where 45 employees ship over 120,000 packages a year. A.G. credits Goldie for the company's success and growth over the last 20 years. It took Goldie about two years to learn everything that I had learned in a lifetime of designing and making knives, then learning how to market them. As president and CEO of this company, she runs it better than I ever have, which accounts for our growth. The man whose name is said to be synonymous with quality handmade knives in America was given that name by his father, Colonel A.G. Russell Jr. From his father, A.G. gleaned some basic principles such as patriotism and responsibility which would guide his life and character. He was an army brat who was raised to be proud of who he was as an American and believed that he was special because of it. In 2004, A.G. began a program to support the troops serving in Afghanistan and Iraq, which he calls the War on Troop Boredom. Having grown up in a military family, A.G. knows the loneliness that each soldier and family suffers when overseas. Care packages containing books, DVDs, A.G. Russell field tweezers, bandages, and a pocket-sized copy of the U.S. Constitution have been sent to thousands of soldiers serving in the Middle East. AG's dedication has brought great attention to this cause and has motivated other knife companies and local Northwest Arkansas businesses to participate in various ways. Blade Magazine awarded AG and Goldie Russell their 2004 Publishers Award for work above and beyond, either in or outside of the cutlery industry. In May of this year, the Secretary of the Army, Pete Guerin, and Congressman John Bozeman honored AG for his support of the troops. Over the years, soldiers have sent letters of gratitude, flags that have been flown in areas of war, and a flood of pictures. The first unit to receive care packages was a long-range reconnaissance company that had been in Iraq for almost a year. This photo is of the captain of that company. While home on leave, he came by to thank AG and to present him with the American flag that he carried throughout his year in Iraq, a headscarf and an Iraqi bayonet. It was a moment AG would look back on with great pride. Over the decades, AG's innovative ideas have left their mark on the world of cutlery. He has forged a career on bringing the knife industry to a higher standard while sharpening his own skills in knife making and production. AG explains his basic philosophy like this, quality and higher quality. Our guarantee is simple. There's no guarantee but the satisfaction of customers. The AG Russell Knives catalog is a unique mixture of superb knives, photography, and well-written copy that shows off AG's deep knowledge of knife history as well as his folksy nature. AG says, I have been designing knives almost since I could hold a pencil. I have had a wonderful 45 years in the knife business. If the next 40 years is just half as rich, I will be well satisfied.